This is part 28 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Bootstrap Navbar component. The Bootstrap Navbar component is useful for creating responsive navigation header for a website. By responsive, we mean on a large screen devices like laptops, desktops, etc., where we have enough room to display the entire navbar horizontally, it appears normal as you can see here. However, on small screen devices like mobile phones, portrait tablets, etc., where we don't have enough room to display the navbar horizontally, the navbar collapses to a button like this with three horizontal lines. And then when we click on this button, that's when the navbar expands vertically, as you can see here. Let's see how to create this kind of a responsive navbar using the Bootstrap navbar component. Let's now flip to Visual Studio. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is create a nav element and set its class to navbar because that's what we are essentially creating here. I'm also going to use navbar default class as we want to use the defaults of the navbar. And then inside this navbar, we want to create this toggle button. So let's create a button element. Let's set its type to button. The class of this is going to be navbar toggle. So this button is the toggle button. If the navbar is not already expanded, when we click on it, it's going to expand it. If it's already expanded, when we click on that, it's going to collapse it. So it will be the toggle button. And that's the reason why we are setting the class to navbar toggle. We're also going to use data dash toggle attribute. And the value of this is going to be collapse. And then the next thing that we want to do is create these three horizontal lines on this toggle button. To create those horizontal lines, we create a span element and set its class to icon bar. Since we want three horizontal lines, I'm going to use three span elements. If you want four horizontal lines, then use four span elements. This button should be inside the navbar header. So to do that, I'm going to create a div element here. And the class of this is going to be navbar header. And then let's move the markup of this button element inside the navbar header div. So this is going to make the button part of the navbar header. The next thing that we want to do is create this section of the navigation bar that expands and collapses when we click this toggle button. So to create this section, I'm going to create a div element with class set to navbar collapse and collapse. And inside this section, the first thing that we want to do is build these links, home, contact, about, and products. So to build those links, we are going to create an unordered list. And the class of this is going to be nav and navbar nav. So inside this unordered list, we are going to create our list items with anchor elements. The href attribute is going to be hash. And the link text is going to be home. Let's make three more copies of the list item. Home, contact, about, products. Now, we want this home navigation item to be active. So on this list item, I'm also going to use active class. So this is going to make that list item active. The next thing that we want to do is build a search form within the navigation bar. To build the search form, we're going to create a form element with class set to navbar form. And we want this search form to be aligned on the left-hand side of the navigation bar. So I'm also going to use navbar left class. And we are using this form for search, so I'm going to set the role of the form to search. And then inside the form, we want to create this search text box. So I'm going to create a form group by creating a development with a class set to form group. And then inside the form group, we are going to create our text box. So input type equals text. 
class equals form control and the placeholder for the text box is going to be search and then we want to create the submit button as well so to create that submit button let's create a button element type equals submit class equal let's use the default button classes btn and btn default and the value on the button is going to be submit and the final thing that we want to do is build this subscribe link on the right in the navigation bar and to create that I'm actually going to make a copy of this unordered list right here and then let's paste it after the search form and then change it accordingly now we want the subscribe link to be aligned on the right hand side of the navigation bar so to do that we are going to use navbar right class as well and then we only need one link so I'm going to delete these three links here and change the text here to subscribe and let's remove this active class let's save our changes and when we reload this page notice we get the navigation bar at the moment we are viewing this page on a large screen size so the navigation bar appears normal let's see what happens when we reduce the screen size notice when we fall below 768 pixels this navigation bar collapses to a button with three horizontal lines when we click on this button we expect the navigation bar to expand vertically but notice nothing happens when I click on this button that's basically because we have not linked this button with this section that we want to expand and collapse to link this section with this button I'm going to use another data dash attribute and that is data dash target now to link this section I'm going to use class selector notice on this development we are using navbar collapse class so let's use class selector which is dot and then the name of the class navbar collapse let's save our changes reload our page notice when I click on the button the navbar expands when I click on it again it collapses now instead of using a class selector like this we can also use an ID selector but for that we need to first include an ID let's say the ID is main navbar and instead of using the class selector which is dot I'm going to use ID selector which is hash and then the ID of the element that we want to link in our case it's the element with ID main navbar let's save our changes reload the page and it should still continue to work the same way let's now discuss few other classes that are useful when creating navigation bar navbar inverse this class modifies the look of the navbar by creating an inverted variation of it let's look at this in action in addition to the two classes that we are using on this nav element let's also use navbar inverse class let's see our changes and when we reload this page notice we get a different variation of the navbar as expected next let's discuss navbar fixed top class this class creates navbar that is fixed on the top of the page to understand the use of this class we need some content on this page so first let's include some content all I have done here is created a div element with class container and inside this div element we have got some static text let's see our changes reload our page we should see that static text now look at what happens to this navigation bar as we scroll down the navigation bar scrolls up and we can't see it what we want to do is fix the navigation bar at the top of the page right here and that's exactly the purpose of navbar fix a top class so let's use this class on the nav element along with the other classes that we already have so the class is navbar fixed top let's see our changes reload our page notice now as we scroll down the page the navbar is fixed at the top as expected but we have a problem here and that is this fixed navbar is hiding some content behind it we have to push the content down so we can see all of it to push the content down all we have to do is include some padding on the body element so let's do that now 
within our index.html page. Notice we are already referencing custom styles.css. So within this style sheet, I'm going to include a style for body element and we want some padding at the top of the page. So I'm going to include padding top and let's include 50 pixels of padding. Let's save our changes, reload the page. Now notice the content is pushed down and we can see all of it. Now let's discuss navbar fixed bottom class. As you might have guessed by now, this class is going to create navbar that is fixed at the bottom of the page. So instead of using navbar fixed top, let's use navbar fixed bottom, save our changes, reload the page. Notice now the navbar is fixed at the bottom of the page. As we scroll all the way down, here some content is behind this fixed navbar at the bottom. So we have to push the content up and for that we have to include some padding on the body element. This time it's going to be padding at the bottom. So padding bottom 50 pixels and when we reload the page the content is now pushed up and we can see all of it. If you look at the navbar that we have here you know there are two problems with this. First the content is not centered within the navbar and we also don't have enough padding for you know the links that we have here. So to center and pad content use either container or container fluid classes with this navigation bar. So to use those classes what I'm going to do is inside the nav element I'm going to create a div element and I'm going to set its class to container. You can also use container fluid class and then I'm going to take all of the navigation bar content and then paste it inside this development that has this class container. Let's save our changes and when we reload the page notice we get padding and you know the links are now centered. So to center and pad navbar content use container or container fluid classes. The fixed navbar may cause some of the page content on the top or bottom to be invisible to push the content up or down, add padding to the top or bottom of the body element. Thank you for listening and have a great day.